Good evening. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Wilmette Plan Commission. Mr. Adler, would you please call the roll? Ms. DeGrino. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Gamey? Here. Mr. Head? Mr. Schwab? Here. Mr. Shepard? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Chairman Bradford? Here. This meeting is being conducted remotely via Microsoft Teams. For those watching this video in the future, the state of Illinois is currently under a stay-at-home order issued by Governor J.B. Pritzker due to the coronavirus global pandemic. As a result, all in-person governmental meetings have been canceled. However, the Open Meetings Act now permits electronic meetings of governmental bodies like the Plan Commission and this meeting we are conducting our business in compliance with state law. This meeting is being broadcast live on your local cable access channel six. <clears throat> it is also being broadcast on the internet on YouTube. Live at the URL for that is www.youtube.com slash user slash village of Wilmette slash live. <clears throat> To participate in this meeting, you can join through Microsoft Teams. Visit the Village's website at www.wilmet.com. Find the calendar event for the Plan Commission meeting. There is a link for you to join the meeting. You will also find the meeting agenda and case reports under the calendar. Alternatively, you can view the meeting on Channel 6 or, your, on, or on YouTube and call in the meeting allowing you to listen and to speak using your microphone. The phone number is 872-239-8225. Tonight's meeting code is 718-700-695-POUND. You may also submit your comments through YouTube Live. A member of the village staff will read your comments to the Plan Commission. All comments to the Plan Commission will be recording in the meeting minutes as we typically do. For our meeting guests joining by Teams, when you are not speaking, please keep the device muted to minimize disruption of the proceedings and your video turned off so that the Commission members can be seen. For those of you new to our proceedings, the purpose of this Commission is to hear evidence on applications for subdivision, consolidation, plan unit developments, and other land use items requested by the Village Board. Based on the evidence we are hearing this evening, we will make a, make a recommendation to the Village Board of Trustees as whether the, the applications that came before us this evening should be granted. The Village Trustees will be considering the recommendations we make this evening at the next regularly scheduled meeting on October 27, 2020. Our recommendations to the board are advisory only. The Village Board has the final say on all applications and will make its own recommendations as to whether to grant the or deny them. The Vill Village Board is not legally bound by our recommendations. <clears throat> this meeting is a legal proceeding and all testimony tonight must be given under oath. Chairman Bradford, uh, yes. sorry to interrupt. The one case we did have um, to go tonight, it appears they did not do the notification ah, for the meeting. Okay. So um, we're yeah. going to have them re-notice. Um, and so uh, we will not have to swear anybody in um, since the only item then on our agenda is the discussion of the comprehensive plan process where there, we're not going to be making any decisions tonight or needing to swear anybody in for that discussion. That, that certainly simplifies things, doesn't it? Yes. All right. Um, the only item we have on our um, agenda this evening is a discussion of the compre comprehensive plan review process. Uh, Mr. Adler, would you give us some background, please? Sure. Um, this was actually a project that was supposed to start um, this summer, um, but because of the pandemic, we <laughs> have postponed it um, um, from uh, mid 2020 to um, hopefully uh, beginning of 2021. 
Um, it is a project that's been budgeted um, to hire a consultant. Um, we are expecting that this is a project that will take a year and a half to two and a half years from uh, start uh, to end. As the memo explains, the plan was last rewritten in 1990. It's um, 30 years ago. That's pretty long time for a comprehensive plan. Now, well, that's a fairly developed community. So in, in some sense, the changes to a comprehensive plan for a community like Wilmette um, come slower uh, than maybe a rapidly, rapidly developing community. Um, there was an update done in 2000. Uh, and then most recently with the Village Center conference, the Village Center master plan adopted as a, a part of the comprehensive plan in uh, 2010. But um, as we know, there's a lot of things that have changed since um, even 2010. But when you go back to 1990, when uh, chapters on infrastructure and transportation and housing and preservation were uh, in the, our commercial districts, a lot of things have changed. And so we know that um, our existing chapters are going to have to be updated. Uh, but equally as important, there's things that uh, modern comprehensive plans take into consideration, like the environment, um, uh, economics, culture, uh, health and wellness, things like that, that we expect will be incorporated in this plan, uh, not necessarily in their own chapters, but, uh, you know, you know, potentially, but also uh in in the other chapters that we have um the um i the idea of how this is going to be reviewed is um this is my understanding this could change but uh but my understanding it's going to be the plan commission who is um overseeing this rewrite uh legally the plan commission to hear any hearings on any changes or adoption of a new comprehensive plan and make a recommendation to the village board. Um, sometimes some communities will put together a panel of members of the zoning board and housing commission and plan commission to uh, oversee the, the review. It's my understanding that the plan commissions asked to do that um, and utilize commissions like the Housing Commission, the Transportation Commission, the Environmental and Energy Commission, the Preservation Commission to assist uh, in writing those chapters with input from the Plan Commission, from the consultant we hire, from staff. And uh, so, it, you know, we've, um, I, I, I think we're going to have a lot of help out there uh, with this. Um, I'm excited that um, it appears that it's going to be the plan commission who's overseeing it because, you know, ultimately, as we know, when it comes to reviewing things, uh, you know, it could be a PUD or it could be some sort of amendment to the zoning code. Uh, you know, the, the, the more knowledgeable we all are about what the basis for the, uh, the adoption of the comprehensive plan, the better uh, we all are, uh, the easier it is to, to make decisions. So um, the first part of the process is, and you could individually just email me. You could, you if you have ideas on things that um, we should ask the consultant to include. And I'm talking more elements, not specifics, because the specific, like if you're like under housing, we need to do this or under preservation, or I think in our commercial districts, this needs to happen. It's not, not necessarily the specifics in there, but what we might be asking the consultant to help us with so that they understand that they're going to be asked to do that. Um, so if you have an idea or something that you think we should include, please let us know. We will put a sort of a, a general statement in there that, you know, cons the consultant that we hire, I'm sure, is going to have worked on many comprehensive plans in the last five to 10 years. And ask them to obviously know if there's something they think that we're missing that maybe we haven't asked for. But um, what I'm asking of you and I've asked of staff and we're going to ask of the village board is, you know, is there something that 
you know, we, we know that sustainability needs to be a part of this plan. Um, but is there something else that maybe we're missing? Um, and, and just on the sustainability item, I think some of you know, but the village, uh, the Environmental and Energy Commission um, is in the process of finalizing a draft to get to the administration committee of a sustainability plan. And I think that's really going to help us and the consultant because that's not something that will have to be um, drafted and adopted. Hopefully by the time we kick this off, the village board will have adopted that plan and then it'll be up to the consultant and us to, and the Environmental and Energy Commission to figure out how to work it in the plan. So um, I've talked long enough. So if you have any questions. John, is it your plan to at least circulate a draft of the RFP? You know what I weekend? what I was thinking is possibly on it, it depends on how quickly we're looking to go. I think a draft of the scope for sure. Um, you know, and I mean um, all, all all of the details of the submission requirements, I don't think we care no, about no, but, but just you know, reviewing uh yeah. your thoughts to date in terms of what the scope of the work is. That yeah. way it would give us a starting point to, to, to try to identify if there's some missing pieces rather than just sort of you know, blindly brainstorming. Right, right. Ab absolutely. I'll, I'll do, you know, what's in the plan gives you an idea of sort of the the, the types of things we're going to ask them mm -hmm. to look at. Um, so if you, if there's something glaring that's missing in, you know, your experience or, you know, um, obviously please let me know, uh, you know, now, but yes, we will, we will develop it more into what would be included as the RFP of the scope of the plan. We're, we won't necessarily get into the detail of, you know, we were predicting 15 meetings or, you know, that we're, we're going to have to think that a little bit through. And, and uh, quite frankly, some of that might change depending on the consultant we bring in and the, their recommendations. Um, John, is, uh, I don't know if anybody on the commission um, has gone through this process before. Obviously, I haven't. So, um, would it be appropriate to reach out to other municipalities who've gone through it and um, either individually or as, as a commission and see, you know, how they went about doing this? And, and, and we have done that already. We know that um, uh, Northfield and Winneka, uh, I think Northfield is finishing up. I don't know if Winneka has their two communities that we got their RFPs. Um, we're utilizing that. Um, so and from a staff point of view, we did that. And um, I, I should clarify, we're, we're not necessarily looking, you know, it, it's not gonna be up to you to make sure that, you know, that that the, we have a, a comprehensive scope that, that ultimately is up to staff. We just wanna make sure if there's something that you're thinking of, or, or if you have a question, you know, um, when we were going through a PUD and a, you know something came up that related to the conference and plan, and you're you have a question on how that might be reflected in the new plan, just give me a call or shoot me an email, and uh, you know. It, so I I I, I wouldn't, um, you know, we're this isn't meant to be a lot of heavy lifting for the plan commission at this point. You're going to have an, a lot of heavy lifting. Um, you know, um, once we start the process. Um, well, I guess my and I apologize because I haven't gone through this, uh, so I'm asking maybe questions that have already been answered. But um, if I think to set the tone that the very first steps are important to set the tone in any process, right? And if there's anything that needs to be done, let's say even if you're going out with an RFP for consultants, there are certain consultants, there's certain things that are more important on the list that you'd be looking for in those consultants. So that's where I'm trying to figure out where do we learn? How do we learn from people who've run this, you know, other communities that have run it and we like what they've done basically. Like, I don't know, like let's say Evanston, for example. Do we like some of the things that they've done in their plan so we can look at the types of consultants they have considered if that makes sense it, it it does but i i think that you know what and we haven't decided on the rfp selection process um yet but uh, from 
staff's point of view, it would start with the plan commission or involve the plan commission. But what, you know, that, you know, we would, we would have, uh, typically you would have some sort of uh, uh, discussion with the <coughs> RFP respondents and have an understanding of the work they've done in the communities they've done. Um, staff here, we're very familiar with probably every planning consultant that's going to submit a response. There's going to be some firms that are out of state that might respond to it that maybe we're not familiar with and we'll have to become more knowledgeable. We're familiar with the big ones that, you know, if you if you look at who have done the RFPs recently, we've worked with all of them in, in some capacity or know them professionally. So, um, but I, I think, Homa, your, your question or your desire of sort of ending the type of plan they've done and making sure that's the type of plan that the village wants and they've got that experience, that's going to come in when we're going through the sort of the, the vetting process of, of the consultant. Um, I think what we want to do is make sure that, and, and we've looked at, again, we've looked at the, the RFPs for a couple of these other communities are relatively generic. And that there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, you're hiring a consultant to, um, to, to help you through this process. And, you know, while we as staff each individually have been involved in some form of of reviewing or writing a comprehensive plan, we don't have the the you know, breadth of knowledge that somebody who's worked on ten of these in the last five years or ten years. And so, um, I, I, you know, the the sort of the 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 real desire is to make sure that, um, you know, if there's if if, if there's something big that we, we just haven't thought about, and I don't, you know, necessarily believe there is going to be, um, but you know, we, we don't know, um, you know, um, and uh, again, it's not, I'm not, I'm not asking you to take a look at six RFPs and then pull stuff out. You know, we've already looked at a bunch of RFPs. We've already looked at, you know, and, um, and, you know, a, a lot of this is also to get you up to speed of, of what's coming your way that, that um, not, you know, not that you haven't been busy, but um, we're expecting come probably spring that you're meeting once or twice a month for, you know, could could be, you know, a year or or, or so. So, you know, my, my guess is you're going to be meeting 12 times in 2021 where we met so far three or four times you know, this year and, and, um, and, uh, it, you know, it's really to, in, in a way to get you excited about it, because I, I think this is, I, I think we could all agree, um, the type of thing as a volunteer on a commission, like the plan commission, um, last time anybody had the opportunity to do this was basically from 85 to 90. So it's been a long time where, um, you know, we've we've had a commission who, who's had, you know, but besides like the village center master plan where um, a couple members of the plan commission were involved in that uh, until it got to the adoption as a comprehensive plan. So. Can I uh, interject? I've, uh, I think this is super exciting. Um, this is there's an enormous amount of opportunities here, um, obviously. A lot has changed since 1990 and even since 2010 and which that process itself started probably before really the we knew what the recession was. So a lot has changed. Um, but by that same token, there's, you know, there's a lot of challenges too with kind of figuring out what's what has changed and how do we assess that data? How do we assess where we are given that we're in the middle of this global pandemic? What does what do things look like going forward, and how do we plan for that going forward? So, um, I you know that's that's going to be a huge challenge, but um, one that I'm sure we can we can overcome. Um, I am curious to know if uh, staff has sort of a sense of what the community process 
throughout this is going to look like. Um, and, you know, obviously you were alluding to, you know, our, our work over the next several months, but if you could speak to that issue, that, that, per, that aspect of it in particular, how we expect, we would expect the consultant to solicit community input and how we would assess that and interact with the community throughout this process. Sure. Um, I, I think there's two things we need to consider. One is um, for the foreseeable future, probably the first six months of um, 2021, um, we're probably not going to be able to have large scale meetings. Um, and so we're going to have to make it clear to the consultant that we're looking um, for somebody who's got uh, experience um, and uh, being able to engage people remotely um, and find out what tools they're using for that purpose. Hope is, and I think this is one reason why we delayed it, is that there will be a time frame during this review that we're going to be able to have those bigger meetings to, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, chapters like housing um, yeah, are, are going to be something that would be very valuable to have a in-person meeting than a, uh, uh, basically a Microsoft Teams meeting where you have 50 people trying to participate. Um, the, the good news is there, there's a lot of data collection and a lot of, uh, uh, work that has to take place during that first six months. Um, there things like focus groups, those will be easy enough to, in, in, in some sense, I think some people prefer to do focus groups in an environment like this than sitting around a, a conference table. Um, so I, I think there's, there, there's those sort of more intimate, uh, aspects of it, which, um, you know, hopefully most of those, um, during the first six months, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting it's, it's, it's more of that uh, to try to get some of the data and some of the information that we need then to make decisions in, in each chapter. I think there's going to be some things that are going to be relatively easy to update. I think like the preservation chapter is going to be relatively easy to update. Um, and um, that might be one where um, doing uh, a meeting like this is, you, yes, you're going to have input, but we already know we're a, we're a certified local government. We know what we have to do. We know, you know, that there's, you know, that, that, you know, that, I don't want to say easy, but it's a little, little bit more straightforward than if we're, when we're taking a look at the NR districts where, we're going to want the consultant to have, we're going to want to have meetings where the neighbors of those NR districts are invited in to give us input. Um, but before that, we're going to have to have some information on what's realistic, um, you know, because it's always nice to say you want A, B, and C. And a perfect example is um, the Treasure Island space where the previous owner was a grocery store. They tried to get a grocer. We tried to get a grocer. We just weren't successful, and that's really what the neighborhood wanted. And not in, you know. So, I, I, to, to answer your question, is um, depending on what chapter we're looking at or what we're looking at, we're going to have to have meetings with the the. In in some cases, it's going to be mostly the people in the neighborhood, even though there's going to be people who, you know, to build property owners developers, people who live six blocks away who are interested because it's their community. But um, we're going to have to have enough meetings that, especially those NR districts, which have seen a huge change. I, I think the, the shopping centers, while we have to look at them like Eden's Plaza, mm -hmm. um, quite frankly, we might see something already happening over there by the time we get to, you know, March of 2021, Plaza de Lago. They've been doing their thing. They've got a couple of uh, new food uses they're applying to get in there. Those are probably a little bit easier, uh, even though Plaza del Lago does have some uh, property where they may want to do something on that that's not a part of the historic center that we probably will look for community input on. Um, the, uh, again, the I, 
one of the big ones is going to be the housing. I think the great thing about the environmental part of it, um, absolutely, there's going to be um, a lot of people who want to give input on it, but um, we're going that the plan is going to be almost adopted within months of starting this process. And so, you know, that's something that's taken two years and I can't even tell you how many meetings we've held on that. Um, and that was that was 90 percent the EEC drafting that there was no consultant involved. So, you know, that's that always takes a little bit longer. So, um, you know, I, I have not we have not sat down to sort of try to figure out the number of, of uh, meetings that we're looking to take place. And it might talk in general of, you know, this, these are the questions we need answered and we need to involve all the stakeholders, which include property owners and includes neighbors and includes residents in general and includes, you know, there's, there, there's depending on the chapter, a multitude of, of uh, stakeholders. Yeah. The treasure Island example is an interesting uh, example of sort of the e the challenges of of addressing the economic development component of the comp plan, and you know how how do we accurately assess what is um, possible and reconcile that with what the community wants? And to the extent those there's a a, dis a disconnect there, you know, are there levers that the powers and authority that the village can assert to you know get to bring those two together to so that you know we can get the community to get to to have what they want um, so that'll be an interesting challenge um, but again you know a good opportunity to kind of do that yeah and i i think what um and um you you you've seen uh, we've seen other communities do this is that in the rfp they identify um like three sub areas where they're going to want more detail and more data uh, more, you know, market analysis, and I, I think we're going to have to do at least from, at least at this point, from our staff's point of view. Um, obviously, the the Ridge Road corridor and probably looking at uh, Linden Square, Fourth and Linden again, mm -hmm. is, you know, those are two really important aspects of this, and um, you know, those elements of it could, you know, will probably on their own take months to to work through um so um yeah i i you know it it's um I, it's a uh, daunting task um especially i i mariah you're, you're talking about even before when we were thinking about this there there was no pandemic and the pandemic has changed things even greater and you know i i think that um there's things that we're not going to identify that are going to come out that are impacting our plan. Um, um, you know, I. How do we how do we do things like preserve, you know, preserve and enhance the tax base, considering how dramatically, you know, the retail landscape has shifted, um, right. you know, things like that. Again, so much has changed and even let alone 1990 well, since 2010. So and the and other thing. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's like we're now collecting tax dollars based on Internet purchases, which is which is much not not that that helps us. You know, with our. Uh, commercial districts and, and getting users in there that people are excited about, but we in, in, a, in a sense, we've got some revenue coming in from the, the you know, the 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 very thing that have caused these areas yeah. to, uh, how do we how do we capture the sort of as the 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 intangible qualities of being a, a a livable walkable community um that aren't really you know it's it's less transactional than nature the other thing that i want to throw out uh in terms of you know lenses and perspectives to look look at look look at this exercise through would be um, you know, social equity and understanding whether there is an opportunity here to look at um, the policies that are in place and going and certainly the ones going forward with this new comprehensive plan. Um, how do we, you know, can we look look at it through a social equity lens? Great. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Which John sort of segues into a question that I had. 
does the village have a uh, policy for diversity participation from the consultant? Sorry, for what? Diversity participation from the consultant. Um, I don't believe we do. No, I, I, you know, there's a, uh, you know, the whole living wage or, uh, but, um, or, uh, sorry, um, prevailing wage. Uh, but I don't know how that relates to consultants, but I'm not that I'm possible. Not that I'm aware of, but I could be wrong. It could be a part of the, I mean, obviously we want to look at the RFP, yeah. score, but I think the RFP um, scoring and criteria um, would be important. I, that's something certainly I'd want to see. And yeah. um, that's something we could rate um, respondents on. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for asking the question is, is it, in my world, we require, we set certain goals for diversity participation, both uh, from our professional services consultants as well as our contractors. And with the professional service consultants, I mean, usually they will put together a team of, of multiple consultants mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they can certainly find, you know, a diverse consultant that would help uh, support their team. I just didn't know whether no, there was I, I, policy in place or not. I, I, you know, the idea of social equity and, and this diversity uh, participation makes sense. And I appreciate, uh, you know, you bringing that up because it wouldn't have ne necessarily been, you know, but absolutely we could, you know. No, I'm, I'm just viewing things from the, 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 the uh, lens of the world that I live in. Thank you. No, and that's, that is so helpful. That's, <laughs> that, that's very, um, yes, thank you. This sounds exciting. It it is. Yes, it's. Um, oddly enough, I was very tail end of uh, the. I, I, I my first stint with the village. I was here in eighty nine. So the very end of the first one. I was here for the revisions and the the uh, the master plan. But um, yeah, so this will be this will be very entertaining. Well, I think. Actually, I am very excited about it, but uh, the the thing that I'm going back to, and it has nothing to do with the RFP, but I think as a community, we need to have an idea about where we want to go and what we want to be, and that will set the tone for who are the consultants we're going to be engaging? You know, what kind of conversations are we going to have? What's going to be on our priority list? So, um, and I don't know, I think that's that's the biggest step. I think that's probably 30%, 40% of the work, figuring out this is what we want to look like. And for that, I think the community involvement is extremely uh, valuable, what uh, Maria was talking about. So, yeah. I, it, Again, I'm I'm learning through this. It just you know I'm like Bill. I do something totally different. But I, I you know if you want to, uh, the, there's there are advantages in changing things. You know sometimes changes a lot of times change is good. But you also have to be cognizant of using the experience of the people who've done it before, and that's the line we have to walk. Um, but yeah, it's some. Yep. Um, I'm grateful. For, to and, and to reinforce what Homo has said, any thought given to doing a, a community survey um, just to get a, a sense of, of, you know, the mood out there? Yeah, um, I, you know, um, definitely could consider that. Um, yeah, I mean, I. Um, Easier yeah. said than done, yes. Right. Right, but I, I I do think that um, you know we when you know it's a conference plan. It's it's a land use document, but it's 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 more than that, and and that's where we need to take it to the point of it's still a land use document. That's its essential purpose. But um, and I and I think you know um, you know there there the things that you brought up, such as the diversity and the social equity. Um, you know, the housing chapter, the whole, you know, th these are things that we know are very important for this community because of uh, discussions that have been taking place in the last six months. Um, the fact that we're reconstituting the uh, uh, 
human relations and the uh, or community relations and the housing commission is a direct result of the community coming to the village and saying it's time we need to have these boards and commissions reconstituted and so you, you know that I, I think that goes to exactly what you're 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 saying and 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 um you know that's a that's going to be a big part of this plan which quite frankly when it was written in 1990 yes um housing was very important um you know but you know it was it was pretty straightforward it's like yes we want to have affordable housing for everybody but mostly specific about persons you know seniors or persons with disabilities it didn't really go much further than that and so um we already know and and not that we shouldn't do a community survey but we know that that's that that's very important no, it just might help ferret out what the uh, community's aspirational goals are. Right. Yep. Great. Um, well, um, November 17th, uh, good for everybody. Great. We would have done the third, but again, the election. So at a minimum, we will come back with something for you to look at uh, in relation to the scope and a little bit more ideas on um, how we're going to deal with, um, you know, sort of the social equity issue and then the diversity issue is, is a part of a, a team that helps us through this process. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Looking forward to it. And uh, in the meantime, if you think of something, um, feel free to reach out. Okay. Sounds good, John. Okay. Hey John, uh, November seventeenth. I was just writing that down in my calendar. Do we, do we expect it? At, you know, like five p.m. sort of start. Is that does that work okay for you? If it works for okay with you, that that's great for me. Um, yeah, it's great for me. Okay. Yep. 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 Perfect. And you know, as long as I get it on the calendar ahead of time, I can plan around it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds good. Excellent. Okay, all. Well, thank you. I don't think I'm I'm looking. I don't think we've had any uh public comment. I'm I'm on YouTube live. Chairman Bradford, I see uh nobody who who joined us. So uh, I think Bill signed off. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. We may okay. never adjourn. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be open. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, I guess. Uh, yeah, do we need a do we need a formal we'll adjourn? Yeah, if you yes, if somebody could uh, move I'm to adjourn, I move to adjourn. Okay, <laughs> and who seconds? I, I'm happy to second that. Okay, um, I am going to uh, call the, the vote. Um, hold on one second, uh, Ms. DeGrino. Yes. Ms. Gamey. Yes. Mr. Schwab. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.